Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Richie's Robots. Uh, you may be well wondering why I'm speaking so loud. Well, that's the focus of this episode uh, today. Uh, what we've got here is we've got a digital microphone connected up to a, a OLED screen. Richie, please speak more softly. And as you see, we've created a, a little robot that is able to monitor your environment and do things based on the amount of decibels. Uh, a useful factor for this can be, for instance, when your kids are in the room and you leave this there, it will constantly tell your kids to keep the vo Richie, right. please speak more softly. All right, so you've got the idea. So you can put it in the room with your kids and it's gonna constantly tell them to keep the noise down. Without you having to do that, you can get on with other things. Uh, other things, could, you could basically do anything with it. At any decibel, you can make any kind of decision and perform any kind of function. So, Richie, please right. speak more softly. So now we're just going to show you how we're gonna put this robot together today and uh, all the components that are uh, connected. So uh, welcome and uh, let's get on with it. So let me explain to you briefly at a high level uh, how the microphone works. So this is a MEMS microphone. MEMS stands for Micro Electrico Mechanical Systems. And uh, the way that the microphone works is it uses a, uh, a technique that is common by a lot of sensors, uh, it uses a capacitive technique, uh, using a capacitive circuit to measure the amount of voltage changes. So uh, you might have seen in one of my previous episodes, you can see the link in the corner right now, uh, I touched on the capacitive soil measure sensor. And basic, uh, basically this measures the amount of moisture that is in the ground using this sensor and a capacitive circuit. So it uses this kind of loop here to create a capacitive circuit of, how, of a certain amount of voltage. And that voltage changes as there is more or less water because water creates more conductivity in the soil. The microphone kind of works on the same process, uh, principle. Uh, basically it has here at the top, these black bits are electrodes. So it's four there in, in my example. It has here a, a perforated film that gets squeezed and out of here comes air. So it allows for flexibility. In the middle here, you have this flexible membrane that, that allows it to be pushed and then comes back down to kind of creates this, uh, electricity, this electricity. And then you have this uh, compressible volume here that allows for the compression to go up. So what happens is, is there is a voltage going here in a capacitive field of let's say one volt. And that's when it's resting at uh, let's say 20 decibels. As the sound waves come through, and hit this com compressible volume, it pushes the membrane up, which brings these electrodes closer to each other. The closer they get, the more voltage the capacitive circuit has. So let's say it goes from one to two voltage, then it's gonna know, okay, for in, as an example, I've got an extra 40 decibels because I've doubled and now I've now got 40 decibels coming through and it can tell the uh, microprocessor that there is 40 decibels coming in on the sensor because it's able to convert the change in the capacitive field and the overall voltage to be able to know how many decibels is hitting it. The harder this, this uh, uh, membrane is pushed up and the closer these electrodes get to each other, the stronger the sound waves are, which means the louder and harder the sound waves are. And we have these air vents here, because if there was no air vents, then the air wouldn't be able to flow through, pushing the membrane up. It would just be like a rock and just sit there and be pretty useless. So in a nutshell, that is how the microphone, and most microphones these days, that's how they work. All right, so let's see, uh, step you through how it's all wired up. There are only three components and it's quite straightforward. Um, on the left there, there's the top left, you have the five volt pin from the ESP32. We connect it up to the five volt rail, which we're using at the bottom there. The ground pin at the bottom of the ESP32, we connect to the uh, ground rail at the bottom. Uh, and then we use the top rail for the ground and for the three volts. Then for the microphone, we connect the uh, SD pin and this will be going uh, to pin 32 on the ESP32. And we do the VCC pin uh, uh, on the uh, microphone. We do that to the five volt rail because the microphone uses five volts. 
and the ground we use to the ground on the bottom rail. Uh, we then connect the SCK pin, which you see uh, at the top left of the microphone. Uh, yep, and that is going to uh, port uh, pin 14 on the ESP32. And then the WS pin, we're connecting to 15. Now we're not doing anything with the left and right channels, so you can leave that uh, open. You don't need to do anything with that. For the screen, the OLED screen, we're gonna connect the ground to the ground, and we're gonna connect the VCC pin to the three volt, because the OLED uses three volts. Then you'll see the SEL pin, that connects to the SEL pinout on the um, ESP32, and that's port uh, pin 22. And then the SDA, and the SDA will go to 21. And that's pretty standard for how uh, any of the uh, devices that use the clock will connect to the ESP32. Once you've got it like that, you're ready to uh, uh, flash the code on and you're ready to go. Okay. So let's look at the code that we're going to be using for my project. Um, I just want to start by saying this program was initially written by Ivan Kostowski. He wrote uh, basically the legwork for this project. Um, he wrote an amazing program that works with the uh, number of microphones. Uh, these are the microphones it works with. To be able to uh, get the capacitive change from the sensor and convert that into decibels. Uh, and then he'll, he allows you to easily write that um, decibel out to a screen, uh, OLED screen, which we're, we're also using, and to be able to uh, put it to the serial monitor. So you can see that. So what we're going to do is we're only going to focus on the code that I've done and the modifications I've needed for this project. If you want to see the information about his project, you can look at it via a link on my YouTube uh, film, Indie Details. They'll take you straight there. You can see exactly what he's done and why he did it and so forth. So moving down, the first thing you want to set is the uh, type of microphone you're using. Uh, we're using the INMP441 sensor. Um, and basically that then tells the program which filter and which filter variables or uh, values to use. Uh, another thing you need to set is the mic offset uh, dB, and we're using for ours in the specifications. You'll see there's 3.0103, and the other thing you need to look at is the uh, bit, which is 24 uh, in our case, and uh, what is the overload decibels before it basically overloads and says no, we're not really going to record anymore. And in this case, 116 is going to be more than enough for what we need. Then moving down, we see, okay, uh, are we gonna use a Google Voice speaker? We say yes. Uh, we give the name of the speaker, the name that you've given it. Uh, we have two variables because we're using both processors. So one of the additions I made to this was to make it uh, multi, uh, uh, use multiple processors. So um, the main program, Ivan's runs on processor zero and mine uh, main function runs on processor one. I do that because if my function runs, it would stop the decibel uh, uh, sampling, and I don't want to do that. I would still want it to sample the decibels all the time to give it the, uh, a very, very uh, accurate kind of uh, test and know exactly how many variable, uh, decibels are being uh, put out in the environment. Now, to do that, because we're going to be passing these two variables between the processors, you need to make them volatile. That'll tell the uh, ESP32 that these uh, can be uh, sent between the two processors. We're doing a counter. So we're basically tracking the amount of decibels and we're gonna keep adding and adding and adding. And then we're doing a loop counter to be able to average it out. So that if we've sampled four times, then the number needs to be divided by four to get the average. Then we've got the sample time in seconds. And uh, basically we're saying, how long do we sample before we check and see, is it the uh, above the amount of decibels we don't want it to be above? We don't want to do it once it just gets above 70, because they, for instance, because there could be a little peak of, of a 70 decibel plus, but it's only for a, a split second and it goes down under. Now we don't want to like, for instance, tell kids off or, or action just on that. We want to sample it. You can, if you want, you can rate, bring that down to one or even half, but for instance, in this experience, we're going to leave it at 15. Then we have the variables to track the max and min because I've added to his program uh, that we will show the min and max uh, decibels that have been uh, recorded whilst the um, ESP32 has been powered on. Then we go down, well, I've written a between function so that we can just check between quite easily is this value between these two values. Uh, you got the Wi-Fi ID and password. Uh, we do the includes if we're using Google Voice because without it, we don't need these uh, folders, uh, these uh, libraries. And then we create the object for the Google Home Notifier, which we're going to call GHN. Now, we're going to keep going down here are the pins we use. Uh, you can pretty much use any ESP uh, 
uh, GPIO. Um, it's no problem as long as there are input pins. So you can use any of them. Um, going down, we say, do we use a display? Um, if we do use a display, so uh, we set that up, actually, I might have skipped past that. Yeah, we, I did. We set that up here. We say, yes, we're going to use a display. And then here, we set the type of display. Now, in my instance, we're using the 128 pixel by the 64 pixel. We have a number of different uh, ones you can use, or you could add your own here, no problem. And we're going to create the uh, display object. Now, moving down, these are all the different filters you see here. This is the one that we're using. So I was looking for that, and, and it basically sets the gain and the, uh, and the offset for all those variables. Uh, and we go down, we go down. Like I said, we're just going to skip what he's done because it will take up too much time. And you can do that separately, or of course, ask me any questions if you like. And now we're into the setup function to set up everything. Very typical for the SP32. Um, first thing is, are we using Google Voice? Yes. Then we connect to Wi-Fi. Um, and then we uh, connect to the uh, Google speaker. Once we've connected, we basically uh, make a uh, statement on the Google speaker saying Google speaker is connected. So we know we're all good. Here, we create the task to run on the second processor because the ESP is a dual uh, processor. And we're calling the Google warning check. So this is the function we're going to create and run on the second processor. So we've created that. And then we go down. Uh, here he's getting the uh, decibels and assigning them to a variable, which is a double. Uh, then we start drawing it. So we draw the decibel to the screen. And what, I what I've added again is I've added the ability to draw the max and the min so that we keep track of what has been the maximum decibel and the minimum decibel. So I've added this little function there. Going down, uh, if we use a Google Voice, then we want to make sure that we every iteration, uh, every time we sample, we want to add the decibels to the total amount of decibels. And these are decibels here. And we want to add one to the loop counter so that we can do the proper averaging. Uh, because this is running uh, in its own loop, we don't need to use the uh, normal function of a loop. Then we have my function here. And this is the one that's running on the second processor. First thing is we make sure we're connected to Wi-Fi. So we check that. Uh, and then we print out that we're connected. Then um, we connect. Uh, uh, sorry, actually, this is the function to connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to skip this because uh, we've gone through this in other uh, episodes. Here is my function that's running on the second processor. Sorry about that. One thing you do is you've got to always have a parameter come in. Now, we're voiding it because we don't have any requirement for it. But it is a force requirement when you're uh, creating a process to run on a uh, set additional processor. Um, and the other requirement is that it is in a loop because if it isn't in a loop, then the processor is going to execute it and stop and there's no way to get it started again. So we put it into a, a dumb for loop, which never ends. And once we come in here, we say the decibel equals the decibel counter divided by the decibel loop counter. And that gives us the average decibels, which is the best sample rate. We check to make sure we're connected to Wi-Fi. If we are, then we have our rules here. Now you can add whatever you want. You can say, for instance, if the if it's between if the decibels is between uh, 70 and 100, do this. If the decibels are between 60 and 65, do this. Uh, or sorry, say this. Or even do this. You could do also functions here. You could light up LEDs. You could do whatever you want. Um, all you need to do is just basically say if it's between these two decibels, do this. That's really it. Um, so you can do whatever you like. You have multiple. You can run uh, 40 or 50 different F statements. Uh, you know, the, the options are endless. Once we've done that, we at the end of it, we reset the counters because we don't want to sample um, the Google Voice speaker itself. We don't want to have that register as part of the decibel because that wouldn't be fair for uh, checking the requirements. For instance, the kids are too loud, but because when the uh, Google Voice comes on to tell them to be quiet, then that voice will come into the sampling rate for the average and that we don't want. Then we come here, we do a delay for the sample time that we set. In this instance, 15 seconds. Because the delays are done in milliseconds, we times it by a thousand. And then we loop it again. And really, uh, that's it. That's as simple as it, uh, it gets, you know. And um, using this, you can kind of uh, pretty much listen to anything and respond at any level doing pretty much anything you like. So that makes it quite powerful. Um, and in this instance, like I showed you, uh, told you, sorry, uh, we use it for uh, controlling our kids to make sure that their TVs and so forth are not too loud. We don't constantly have to badger them. We let Google do that. And uh, I've got a little demonstration here of how it didn't work. And I'll show you this right now. Quintan, turn the volume down.
Wind Tan, turn the volume down. Quintan, turn the volume down. All right, so uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, episode of uh, Richie's Robots. I hope you really learn, uh, like how learning how to use the microphone to uh, basically do a variety of things. Uh, like you saw in this episode, we can make a nice kind of uh, controller for our children, which is cool, so that you don't always have to tell them to uh, keep the noise down. Richie, please speak more softly. So, yeah. <laughs> But luckily, in my instance, all he can do is just uh, tell me to be quiet. Luckily, I'm also not a kid, so I don't really need to listen. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I hope that you do subscribe. subscribe. Uh, it really helps me. Richie, and, last warning. And Keep yes, it down. Just be quiet. And uh, if you can subscribe, it will be really appreciated. Uh, it allows me to do more with my content and uh, allows me more po uh, possibilities. And, um, you know, as usual, if you have any comments or would like to... Uh, okay. To you asked for it, buddy. All Lights right. out for you. All right, well, you get the point, and I uh, hope to see you in the upcoming episode. Take care.